This is going to be a six step guide to maximize your chance of getting a job in tech this year. So let's get started. Step one, ask yourself why you want to get into tech in the first place. Is it because of the money? Is it because you're passionate about tech? Or is it because you want to be able to build a certain type of tech? Whatever your motivation is, I'm not going to judge you for it. But the important thing is that you think about it carefully. and You ask yourself, is getting a job in tech actually going to get you the thing that you really want? And then you need to decide what type of job you want because there are many, many different types of jobs available in tech. There's front end, back end, full stack, data engineering, DevOps, cloud, product management, project management, UI, UX, so many options. So find what's available in your local market, what you're good at, and try to find you know, an intersection of those things plus what you're interested in doing. Step three, learn fundamental skills. This step might take a, about 100 days or a little bit more depending on your focus area. And 100 days are not going to be enough to learn everything you need to know to get a job in tech, but it is going to be enough to have a really solid foundation. So for example, if you want to be a software engineer, you might want to learn things like for loops, if statements, functions, and other basic programming concepts. So after learning those things, you know, within those 100 days, start solving simple problems and work on exercise problems to solidify your understanding and make sure to build some uh, simple projects, whether it's a calculator app or a calendar app to further practice your skills. Step four, do everything you can to gain experience. A lot of people say, how do I even get experience before I have the experience? My answer is always go get some experience. And for that, I recommend a couple of things. One, open source contributions. Two, freelancing for local businesses or using platforms like Fiverr or Upwork. Three, your own projects or building your own business. Any options work here, but be mindful. You know, if you try using stuff like Fiverr or Upwork, that can be really hard because you know, you'll be competing with a global pool of talent. So instead, I would generally recommend contributing to open source or doing freelancing work for local businesses. And keep in mind that even if you're not getting paid for some of these things, in my opinion, experience is experience. You know, if you do open source contributions and if you send in a few significant PRs, then you're putting in a lot of work for it. You might not be getting paid for it, but at least you should be getting paid by experience. And uh, you wanna be able to put that on your LinkedIn experience section. I wanna emphasize that part and the way you can do that is by creating a LinkedIn business page and by putting what you've done as part of your experience section by calling yourself software developer at the business page, you know, create a nice professional logo for it, have a nice name for that business page. And that way you're gonna start to have more experience that you can show again in your LinkedIn experience section. And you wanna spend about six months, at least six months, I would say, on this portion so that you'll have six months of solid experience. Once you have you know, six months of experience, 100 days of solid uh, basic learning, then you wanna start a network so that you can get in front of people. The thing with you know, cold apply, it's totally fine if you wanna go for it, but each application will get hundreds of applicants and it's gonna be really hard for you to stand out. So what you want to do instead is actually go talk to people at meetups, conferences, online events, offline events, wherever you can talk to actual human beings, recruiters or other people in tech so that you can get noticed. One thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't want to appear too desperate. You know, you don't want to go up to someone you just met and say, can you give me a job? I've seen this happen. Don't do it. Instead, focus on creating long-term meaningful relationships you know, this kind of thing will take at least three months, let's say, from the point you meet someone to the point where they might be comfortable referring you to a job. Now, in the previous step, as you gain more experience, it's important to share your progress online. So use platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter. You don't have to share every single thing, but share highlights, share something you learned, share what you're proud of so that more people will know that you exist in the first place and so that more people will know what you're working on. Then what's really powerful about this concept of building in public is that as you start to network like this penguin is doing, uh, you start to meet more people, uh, connect with more people on platforms like LinkedIn. And as you build in public, as you share your progress online, 
they will start to notice, they will start to have you on top of their mind as you share what you're passionate about, what you're good at, where your skill sets are. And finally, you want to start working on your interview skills. I would say though, uh, in the current market and the market I expect later this year, the main challenge will still be to land interviews, not get through them. But still, when you start to land interviews, uh, you want to make sure that you don't waste those opportunities. You might not be able to get through you know, 10 out of 10 interviews, but at least you want to be able to get through you know, maybe 5 out of 10, uh, 7 out of 10, I, ideally 8 or 9 out of 10 when you get uh, really good at interviews, it's possible. And for that, I recommend a few things. First, you need to realize that interviews are really just a form of conversations. There's nothing really special about it. You know, you might think, okay, you're supposed to answer these questions that people ask in this weird formality thing, but I wouldn't necessarily see it that way. If you become a really good communicator in general, a really good conversationalist in general, then that will show in interviews because at the end of the day, again, they are just conversations. So what you want to do is basically go talk to as many people as possible in these networking events, like I mentioned earlier, and then practice your communication skills in general. Become a really good listener, be good at empathy, and all of those things. And then the second thing I recommend is working on your problem solving skills. Again, this is a general skill that you can also apply to interviews. You know, this is not particular to just interviews. Uh, if you've worked on freelancing things or open source contributions, then you will have naturally built up some of these skills. But you know, if you feel like uh, you need to practice a little bit more, then do a little bit of lead code if you need to, hacker rank, uh, code wars, whatever you find the most <laughs> enjoyable the le or the least painful. And then uh, you, you might need to grind a little bit, but whatever you need to do, do that. And then finally, I would say practicing in a simulated environment is going to be really helpful. So what this means is that you want to ask your friends or people in your community to give you some mock interviews. This is going to be a really good practice for you. And I would also say you should also offer to give people mock interviews because that way you're going to start to understand what it feels like into in the interviewer's shoes. And that's going to give you some more empathy and that's going to make you a much better interviewer in my opinion. So just to recap quickly, first ask yourself why you want to get a job in tech in the first place, and then uh, decide what type of job you want exactly, and then learn fundamental skills, that's step three. Gain more experience, do some networking, and work on your interview skills. In my opinion, this whole process should take about one year. And you might say, that's too optimistic. Maybe, maybe true, you know, depending on your location, but I don't think it's overly optimistic. And here's why. One of the reasons is because I am pretty optimistic about the upcoming market in the economy, especially if and when the Fed decides to cut interest rate, it's going to be good for the stock market and it's going to be good for the job market as well. But more importantly, I think one year is a realistic timeline because most people are not that consistent. You know, a bunch of people are going to listen to this advice and let's say out of a thousand people who listen to this advice, maybe, um, you know, a hundred people will get started or maybe 500, you know, if, if I'm being optimistic. And out of those, after 10 days, you know, we're going to have maybe 50 people left. After a hundred days, maybe we'll have 10 people left. After 365 days, how many people do you think are consistent enough? to show up every day, to you know, do the work every day, to actually finish this roadmap. I would say probably two or three, you know, if I'm being realistic, if I'm being you know, optimistic, I might say five or six. What that means is that if you're one of those people, it's gonna make a huge difference. It's gonna give you a huge advantage in this you know, even tough economy, and it's gonna give you a much better chance of you know, being able to get a job compared to those people who didn't show up for one year straight. And as I said, you know, that's a realistic estimate, you know, two to three people, five, five to six people being able to finish this out of a thousand. But I really want more of you to be able to finish this roadmap. You know, if you watch this far, I really want you to be able to, you know, become a more, really more exceptional, you know, have a, a lot more energy uh, on this journey and be able to actually finish it and get a job 
365 days.